Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how to install your electronic power pedal kit on the Talaria Sting RMX4. Here are the parts that you'll receive with your kit. It's the left side bracket, the electronic pedal assist. If you order the pedals, cranks, right side bracket, complete spindle, two zip ties, one free wheel hub with the free wheel and a 36 link. A one speed bicycle chain, a special allen key to tighten down the screws, two shirt clips, one collar, and the throttle cable connector that comes uh, with the MX4 um, Talaria kit. Okay guys, so first thing, we need to remove the side brackets and we're gonna start by removing the screw that holds down the side brace remove it okay now we are going to remove these screws use your five millimeter allen wrench careful because they have a very high torque okay now let's loosen the other one Perfect. Now we can start unscrewing both of them. Let's loosen this one first. Okay. Careful when you loosen the top one, because you don't want to damage your side stand sensor. There it is. Okay, so you can continue removing the sensor. You might want to remove the, the foot peg if you want to make the job faster. You can also try to remove this nut. Okay, now we have our loose sensor. Now we are going to remove the bracket on the right side. So again, take your five millimeter Allen wrench, put a good amount of torque. I'll be losing the other one. Okay. One screw off. Now we just have this one remaining. Okay, now side bracket removed. Okay, now we're gonna remove the side stand from the bracket. So first we need to take a 13 millimeter socket and remove this nut. Okay, now we take our six millimeter Allen wrench and, and loosen the screw. Okay. okay, now we take this pin off with our spanner wrench. It's pretty tight. Actually, I had to use a larger uh, spanner wrench because first I started with this one, but it was very tight. So. I had to put it on the floor, put my foot over the foot peg, and then use this large spanner wrench to loosen it. Something like this. It 
it goes very tight so okay now we take this pin off okay now we take our left side bracket and we take the pin we just removed and put it here on the bracket again we take our spanner wrench and start tighten in the pin try not to scratch the paint okay there we go now we're going to install the side stand we just put it in like this, take the same screw we had, here, Do not over tighten it so we have a smooth side stand movement. Then we take the, the nut. Okay. Test it, should be soft. Now we're gonna put on the, the spring. Okay, now we're gonna install the, the spring, the side stand spring. So put this side stand down, put the short hook here on top, and then we'll want to do some lever by putting the screwdriver here and start pulling the spring on the pin like this okay and then we just pull off the screwdriver and there we go it's important to put the spring this same direction like coming from downwards upwards it'll be easier to install on Okay, now we need to remove the chain in order to install the the sprocket so let's remove the the master link please check that this pin is open in the opposite direction of movement okay so let's remove this pin and let's remove this Careful with the two O-rings. Make sure you you keep them safe. Now let's remove the master link, which also has two O-rings. So to remove the circ clip that's holding on this bracket, you might want to use the chain until you can see it. That's in a comfortable position so let's use the chain again we put the chain on and turn the rear wheel until we have it on a nice position there we go okay now we take our circ clip removing tool which has two tips that we need to insert on the circ clip
sorry. And I was able to remove it. Now we remove our sprocket. And we need to remove the other shirt clip that we have there. For this one, we do have more space. Okay, now we took it off. Okay, now we take our small collar, put it onto the onto the shaft right until the end. Okay. Okay, now put it all the way in and get your 1.5 millimeter allen wrench okay so now you take your bicycle sprocket and put it in sometimes this sprocket won't come in easily like this case so you'll need to twist it twist it or spin it until you can put it in if not then you'll need to remove the the rear the rear swing arm so you can have more space you just need to loosen the screws and there you can maneuver more easily but that's not supposed to happen frequently okay now we're gonna put in the the motorcycle sprocket check that the sprocket has a channel here so you can slide it over the the um, output shaft and that we have the tap here that needs to match the tap on the bicycle sprocket so I'm gonna put the bicycle sprocket facing down okay now I'm gonna put in the motorcycle sprocket I need to spin it until I find a suitable position Okay. Now, I need. Okay. There we go. Now I need to put on the screws. Okay, so now I'm gonna put on the three screws. Put on the screw there on the wrench. Then remove the wrench and then put the screw into position. Okay. And then I need to start tightening the screw. It's annoying, but this should be done only once. Maybe you can use your fingers at the beginning. To start the screw. Put the wrench in. Okay.
Okay, so once you tighten all three screws, um, we need to put on the circ clip again. Make sure all three screws are correctly tightened. Okay, now to put on the circ clip, we put the circ clip on the pliers and we start We start putting the circ clip on, open the circ clip, and you can aid yourself with an Allen wrench or with a screwdriver or, or with whatever it's easier for you. Okay, now the circ clip is on the output shaft. I took the pliers off and then we can take a flat tip screwdriver to push the circ clip into position. So you can take a flat tip screwdriver and push the circ clip onto position. Just to make sure it's correctly sitting on the groove. Okay, there it is. And now it should spin freely on the groove. There we go. We're all set with this sprocket. Now we should put on the chain. Remember to put the chain over the bracket that the rear swing arm has. And then you can push the chain on, push, push, and you can turn the wheel so you'll have more chain. Okay, then you can just pull the chain from below and we can install the chain again. So now we have the chain looking like this. We take our master link, put it into the into the chain. It's better if you use this bracket to help you um, close the chain. So there we go. We take the O-rings we had taken off previously so we put the o-rings on the chain one and two then we put the link okay then we take some pliers so we can close the link and we take the pin and put it on like this and we push inside and then use the pin to close the chain and there we go make sure to close it with the open side of the pin facing downwards. Now we're going to install the left side bracket. So we match the holes here. Let's match the lower one first. Then we match the upper one. Okay. 
and we're gonna tighten the screws but not totally because we need to be we need to tension the chain afterwards Here we can still move the bracket. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to insert the spindle, so what I recommend is you tighten down the left side, right side is the one that has this hole right here, so loosen this collar, we don't want it sitting there yet, we need to remove it, then we put the spindle inside There. No. Okay, now what I suggest is you take your free wheel with your free wheel hub and remove the screw that goes over the hole and there until you see it. Then you tighten this other screw. And then you will tighten down the set screw here, which should match the hole we were we were seeing. Now we can remove loosen this one. Okay, now we have some slack there. Finish tightening down this one. Then we tighten this one. There we go. So we have a well tightened hub. You can use blue Loctite if you want to make sure it doesn't move. So now you can put on the hub there. Okay, now we're gonna put on the left side crank on. So we put the crank on, the washer, and then we use blue loctite on the nut this is important oh too much blue loctite remember this is a left hand screw or thread sorry so it tightens counterclockwise Then we need to tighten this properly. Okay. Then we can lower down, down the side stand. That'll help us put the pedal sensor Okay, now you can try bring some water over the sensor because we need to slide it and this part can be difficult. Need to push, 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 push. Okay, you can aid yourself by putting your fingers behind the free wheel and pushing and sliding. Okay, now we can position it more or less over there then we take our sensor fixing bracket okay now we take this the, the shaft collar put it on top and use some blue loctite put it there on top we do not tighten it yet now we take the left side bracket 
and slide it on and make sure we have the sensor fixing bracket matching the hole also okay now we have our sensor fixing bracket the bracket and we should have all of them matching the holes and then we put our screw on and then the lower one and we just tighten the screws but not totally because we need to tension the chain this is how we can tension Okay, now we're gonna put on the bicycle chain. Okay, now to put on the bicycle chain, we need to remove again the pin. Remove the master link and open the chain. Now we are going to put it over the bicycle sprocket. So we can just position it there. Over the bicycle sprocket. Then Then we put it over the free wheel. Okay. And then we take the other side if we if we can reach it we spin the wheel. And again we use the free wheel to help us close the chain. So we put the master link facing the opposite side. So this is the back of the master link. We put it there. We can spin the wheel. gonna raise the side stand so it can spin it freely there we go and now we install it from the other side so now we put on the, the link and then we need to put on the pin same direction I mean the open side of the clip must face the opposite side of direction so it goes like this oh sorry it goes like this okay okay so now we're gonna Tension the chain if you see we have enough room here and behind the chain we've gotten some comments that the chain rubs on the frame uh, if you tension the chain properly it won't so how do we tension the chain properly we can um, untighten the screw and if you see we can change the chain tension by doing this but we want it tightened not too much so you can do some downforce on the spindle to increase chain tension there we go so we tighten down the 
lower screw. Tighten it down hard. Okay, now pull down and then tension the chain there on the upper screw. As you see, we have chain tension, but it won't rub the frame. You just need to tension it properly. Now we need to tension it at the other side. Again, same procedure. Push down if you want to make the chain tension higher. Tension the screw. Tighten the screw, sorry. Now we need to tighten this one. And again, pushing down. In this case, I need to push down on the spindle. There we check chain tension. And it's okay. It doesn't rub on the frame. Once you have installed the spindle and everything, um, check that the chain alignment is okay. So that uh, the chains are not touching each other. And the bicycle chain is aligned I mean the bicycle sprocket is aligned with the freewheel so you will not get any noise. Okay now we need to tighten the collar. So I take the set screw off and I'm trying to find I'm trying to find the hole that corresponds to see if it matches when the collar is totally um, sitting against the bracket. There, it, there it's matching. There it is, but it's not matching completely. Some some distances may vary a little bit. So what I suggest is you do not tighten in the hole if it doesn't match properly. So we can just tighten it anywhere on the spindle. This is a cup point set screw so it will bite on the shaft sorry on the spindle and it will secure its position okay there we go just flush it against the side bracket so you can secure the spindle's position. And now we can tighten it there. Tighten it properly. So you can have the cup point um, bite into the spindle. Okay, there we go. Now we have our spindle secured. Okay, now let's install the rest of the electronic pedal assist. First, let's install the other crank, which has an offset of 180 degrees against the other crank. Okay, we put the the washer and again some blue Loctite a little bit this is enough let's put it on and we take our 14 millimeter 
socket wrench with our ratchet. Tighten it properly. Okay, now we're gonna put on the pedals. If you chose the flat pedals, uh, check that the letter R is here for the right side. If you chose the reflective ones, it's supposed to be here. So, this pedal tightens clockwise. So you just need to rock it a little bit or, or spin it until you find the correct thread. It should not enter with, with any force. I mean it should enter properly with your hand like this. If you, if you put it on by force then you're damaging the thread. Okay, now we put our six millimeter Allen wrench on the back side. Okay, and now we tighten properly again. Okay, and let's put the pedal on the other side. Okay, now we're on the other side again, letter L here put it onto the crank and this one tightens counterclockwise again with your hand put the six millimeter allen wrench on the back and tighten Okay, there we go. Now we need to remove the bash part. So, we take our Allen wrench. And we need to completely remove these screws. Okay, this one we need to loosen just. If it if it will spin freely, this has a nut on the back. Now put a spanner wrench on the back or a, or a socket, and then just loosen it a little bit. Now we remove the other side. Same situation here, we remove this screw, keep it in a safe place, and again, use a socket wrench to maintain this screw's position. then just loosen this screw a little bit. Okay, now you should be able to lower down the bash guard, perfect. Now that we are on this side, if you want to install this side stand uh, sensor, then you need to cut this zip tie so you can reroute the cable and have the cable reach. Okay, there. And there's also another zip tie here on the upper part that we need to cut. So we can cut it here from the back. Okay. 
and you need to reroute the sensor. Now to reroute the sensor cable, you need to go all the way to the connector and pull it, bring the connector to the right, so you have more cable length until you can have the sensor reach the desired position. Now to install it, let's bring the nut, the jam nut, towards the middle and flush the sensor against the side stem and, and put the jam nut there. It should match the middle here if you flush it against the side stand and now we're gonna put on the side the zip ties okay so you can start the zip tie start both of them okay supply two then put one before the jam knot and one afterwards and then put both of them there and you just tighten down making sure you have the sensor in position there and then the other one Now we take our pliers and pull while holding down the, not too much because you will break them. And then we take our pliers and cut one. And there we go, it's in position. Now we take our sensor cable and put it over the bash guard. Have it here. Then we need to bring this cable all the way to the top. Now we take the cable and put it in through here. It'll come out this side and then we take it out this way so we have coming it out this way okay right through here now we take off this cover You can use different routings, this is just the one I prefer. Okay. Now we remove the one on the other side. Now we take the cable and put it in through here. push the cable a little bit okay now we we have the cable showing up here in the main compartment we pull and we route it here so we can have it available now we need to remove this switch cover Here. Okay, and the other one.
careful not to lose the screws then we can take the switch cover off and we have good space to work there now um, we take the throttle connector and disconnect it okay and we pull this cable inside okay now the cable from the Kaniwawa controller has a male green 5 pin connector which must be connected to the bike's um, female connector however we need to trim this connector all the way so that it's at the same level or flushed against the 5 pin connector otherwise you won't you will not be able to connect this connector together so you just need to match there's like a little tooth here that you need to match it with the groove here make sure you match them before connecting because these pins are very fragile and you will damage the connector okay so there we have it now we take the cable from the sensor that we had um, installed previously and we take the female orange or yellow three pin connector from the Kaniwa controller and also connect them matching the arrows again the teeth in the groove the tooth in the groove so we connect them together and now we have to install the three position switch now we take our Phillips screwdriver so we can install the three position switch we remove the screws Okay, now we're going to install the switch. I like to install it this way. It's easier for me, although some people do install it this way. I prefer doing it like this. Now we take the cable switch and put it onto the battery compartment. Again, pull these cables. Now we can connect the, con the Kaniwa controller cable with the throttle control throttle connector. Again, matching the arrows. There we go. Since this connector is larger, I'm going to put a little bit of, of black tape here. Although the connection is tight, I prefer to be on the safe side, so we just use a little bit of black tape to secure the connection there. And there we go. And I will put the battery in. We take the cable from the three position sensor and connect it on the Kaniwa controllers um, cable there we go now we have all connections done and we can start by um, making things tidy here so you can just lift this connector and Stash things here in. Then 
then you can connect the connector then turn the switch on finish accommodating or stashing everything there then you need to put on the switch cover on again make sure cables are properly routed and then we're gonna tighten down again the switch cover okay before tightening make sure all cables have good slack when you're turning the handlebar on all directions you need to have cables not being tight okay so now we're gonna tighten down the um, switch It doesn't have to be super tight just making sure we have the cables secured okay now we're gonna install the bash guard and we're done okay now we're gonna put on the bash guard if you're not able to secure it then you need to check if something is interfering okay now we put on the screw tighten it and now the other screw the lower one again we take our spanner wrench okay now it's properly tightened And now we are on to the other side. Now this other screw, the lower one, we take again this panel wrench to fix the position and we tighten down the screws okay now we finish the bash guard and we need to start the horn protector and we're done okay now we'll put on the the horn cover Take the, this cover has two large screws and one small screw, so the small screw goes on here. And now the one on the other side and we're finished. Okay, now we finished our installation. We're gonna turn on the bike. There we go. Because the refresh rate, we have the switch in position zero. We're gonna put it in sport mode. 
and we press the start button. Now it's going at 93 kilometers per hour. Now we put the bike or the switch in position one. We have no throttle. I'm gonna put it in echo mode. And now we're gonna see the pedals work. You see, I'm pedaling. And we have a limited speed. Thirty kilometers, thirty-two kilometers per hour, which is twenty miles per hour. If I stop pedaling, the bike stops. Okay, and if I put it in position two, we have throttle, and we also have pedals.